Thursday's officer involved shooting happened right here on Route 32, just miles away from downtown Crawfordsville and steps away from a neighbor's front porch. This is one of the biggest highlights of today, a slip and slide that's 180 feet long. Come on, guys, let's go. Well, around 8 this evening, officials called this a recovery effort after nearly two hours of using sonar technology and divers. One woman tells me about 30 of them were inside for Father's Day dinner and they all took cover. You can see where the wind blew a lot of the siding right off the church, leaving it right here on the ground. Take a look at these walls. They're now covered in soot left over from the fire. The federal indictment claims Moyad and Maid's father said something to a coworker about bringing an AK-47 assault rifle to his company Christmas party. I'm standing on a picnic table in what's supposed to be a parking lot. Go ahead and take a look at the amount of water that's surrounding me right now. Officials say that the water levels have risen by 13 and a half feet. Farmers here in Grant County say they're at a loss for words at the amount of rainfall this season. Take a look. I'm standing where crops are supposed to be planted this time of year. Right now, there are crews here trying to clean up some of that damage, but I want you to take a look at the roof. This is one of the biggest concerns for residents as the night goes on. The numbers are alarming. Just seven months into the year and out of those 84 homicides, 17 of them are under the age of 20. The parent I spoke with tells me that there are many foul balls at last night's game, but she never thought something tragic like this could happen. Saturday night at the top of the third inning. Oh, two. They carried him up into the pavilion. That ball came in very, very quickly. And then a few minutes later, I could hear him screaming. Tanya Lipscomb and her family tell me they were sitting feet away when the ball came darting into the stands. As a parent, it was instantly you just you were just like feeling what those parents must be feeling. It was horrifying. It was traumatizing and scary for others as well. You can see here where many are in the stands eager to learn if the little boy is OK. Also taking a toll on the Gwinnett Stripers batter, Ryan Lamar. Now I think Lamar saw what might have happened and he's outside of the box and visibly upset. Screams from a young boy sending concern down the first baseline. But I just couldn't get myself to kind of look. It was just, I didn't want to see. Now Mora reacted immediately. Last week in Houston, a similar incident happened with Chicago Cubs batter Albert Almora, sparking a broader conversation about safety at the parks. A few years ago, the Indians extended their netting to both dugouts, but Lipscomb wonders if that's enough. Of course, we take extra precautions, but I can't educate a three year old on how to watch out for a fastball. I mean, even if a fastball were coming at me as an adult, how am I supposed to protect myself from that? I mean, I can pay attention, but I can't stop it. And Lamar still on an E inside the batter's box. The Indians released a statement saying in part, quote, a young fan was struck by a foul ball along the first baseline. On-site EMT personnel provided treatment at the stadium and the fan was transported to the hospital, end quote. Just hope that it wasn't as bad as it looked. Lipscomb says she and her family left immediately after out of fear for her two boys, ages three and 13. But the little boy's cry for help continues to repeat itself. We've been praying and um, I hope that he's OK. Roofs stripped and scattered, billboards ripped from the frame, roads closed, walls peeled from homes exposing the inside after an EF2 leaves utter devastation in the town of Ellettsville. In the 48 years of living in Monroe County, Robert Smith has never experienced anything like this. We just happened to be standing out on the front porch and thought, well, this is getting a little bit worse. And the next thing we know, here it come, and we duck back in the house real quickly. His home left spared, his barn not so much. That was a pole barn that we had, and uh, as you see, it not only pulled the top off, but it pulled those posts out of the ground. The hills have eyes. From here, you can see trees nearly chopped in half. Take a look at this. You can see where power lines and power poles are down and you can even see where metal is left twisted and mangled. But I want you to take a look across the street where there are several crews working to restore power for those right here in Monroe County. 
Just down the street on Cowden Road, Bob McLaughlin and his wife took cover in the hallway. You can see his home covered with a tarp after winds shattered windows, dismantled his front porch, and trees punched through his roof. There's about 12 big holes through the roof, but uh, you could just feel the house shake every time a tree would land on it, you know, and, 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 and just fall on it. Leaving a neighbor's garage upside down in their mailbox in his backyard. Oh, we knew it. A friend of mine called and he said it's a mile from your house headed right for you. He said take cover. We took cover. Uh, 20 seconds it was gone. 20 seconds. And I called him back. I said it hit us bad, it's headed your way. But it's not the same thing he experienced in 1992. Well, now the 92 tornado sounded like a freight train. When they tell you that, it, believe it. This one had no sound, it was just a roar. As Mother Nature got too friendly, so did these neighbors, banding together to lend a helping hand. A lot of friends, a lot of neighbors, we got it, got it covered for now. But the neighbors on Cowden Road believe their comeback will be stronger than this setback. In Ellettsville, Darius Johnson, Fox 59 News. Brandy Brown was sitting in a grocery store parking lot, unaware that someone was trying to rob the Prime Trust Credit Union just across the street. So I was sitting here eating my ice cream on my lunch break and um, I looked up and the place was surrounded and Police were coming out from everywhere with guns drawn. Suspect came into the bank, uh, firearm was displayed at some point, and someone attempted to intervene with the robbery, and a shot was fired inside the bank. The bullet hit a customer in the leg who tried to play hero. Police believe it was a grazed wound, and he's expected to be okay. No one else in the bank got hurt. That includes Phyllis Mills's daughter, who works there. Words can I express? When it's your child involved, you just. And you're still shaking right now, you even just a little bit. she's okay. God is good, but you know, when that happens, you just want to make sure your daughter's okay. Shortly after the shooting, a dozen officers and a canine started searching for the would-be robber. Sounds like in that time, a suspect left on foot um, and possibly a bicycle. Police say they took someone in for questioning. However, that person didn't end up being the man responsible. They have not said if the suspect got away with any cash. It's kind of scary me sitting here and not knowing that it was happening, anything could have happened. Again, that customer is expected to be okay. Police tell me this is a joint investigation with Muncie PD and the FBI. We will continue to bring you all new information as soon as we learn more. For now, reporting in Muncie, Darius Johnson, CBS4 News.